viewers, and welcome to Around Town with Rotary. This is a monthly meeting to educate all of you on all the wonderful things that the Beverly Rotary Club is up to on a monthly basis. Each month, in fact, we have a, a, a guest who, is who typically is a Rotarian, and uh, we find that that's very helpful to learn more about them and certainly, again, more about our club. Today, we have actually three guests with us. And this is a first, and we're looking forward to, to discussing some very significant events that the Beverly Rotary Club is, is, uh, is a challenge with right now. And without further ado, please welcome co-host Mike Harrington. Thank you, Al. Hello, everyone. Hey, we have a really interesting show here today. Uh, the Beverly Rotary Club is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year, and we have a committee that's formed that has all kinds of really cool things going on this year to celebrate our 100th year anniversary and to continue our outreach into the community. So we have three very special guests here today we'd like to introduce and, and talk with today. We have Matt Piarca here, we have Laurie Chanchuli, and we have Jackie Rapisati. Welcome to the three of you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hey Matt, why don't we start with you? Um, you know, we're gonna spend a little bit of time today talking about the 100th year and, and your involvement in that. But before we get into that, let's, let's talk a little bit about you. Can you share with us a little bit about your background, where you grew up and where you're living now and what's going on with you? Sure. I, I, I grew up in a little town called Vestal, New York, right outside of a little city called Binghamton, New York. Um, some people might not have heard of either of those, but I moved to the Boston area back in 1980 initially to attend law school at Boston University. Um, and then, surprise, surprise, I veered into a uh, totally different uh, direction because I mostly do uh, financial planning, uh, investment advisory, wealth management, all that. I've been doing that for over 35 years. Um, in 2008, I brought my office over to, um, to Beverly, to uh, the Cummings Center, and I've been there ever since. But I live in Peabody with my beautiful wife, Rosemary, and our three kids and a dog. Um, and I got brought over to the Beverly Rotary by uh, someone I was sharing space with initially um, in the Cummings Center and found something that I didn't really know existed before that. And so I've been a Beverly Rotarian since um, the fall of 2008. And I've enjoyed not just the, uh, the fellowship and camaraderie of a club like we have, which is very dynamic, full of a lot of wonderful people, but also I've enjoyed getting to see our club make a visible impact um, in our community over and over again since then. Uh, and I know we'll talk a little bit more about some of the things that the Rotary Club has, has done, but since I've been in the club, I've been aware of you know, our funding of a bookmobile for the library, the gazebo, bootstraps, refrigerated truck, all kinds of service projects. We planted 100 trees a few years ago. Um, it's all about giving back and being part of the community. And I love how Beverly Rotary Club is really a partner with the whole community of Beverly. I also had the, uh, the privilege and honor of serving as the Beverly Rotary president in uh, 2018 through 2019. So very glad to join you all today. Thanks yeah, for joining us, Matt. Appreciate that. Years. Appreciate that that background. And um, uh, yes, being a part of your year as president, uh, I remember that was a very productive year. And thanks to your leadership, uh, did, just did a great, great job. So thank you for that. So Jackie Rapasati, you are up, and everybody knows Jackie from all of your work here in the city of Beverly, but most importantly for your work here in the Rotary Club. So let's uh, let's get a little bit of uh, background information from you. Sure, Al. Um, you're right. I, it, it's funny, just what you just said. I can walk through Beverly and I can hear Miss Rap, Miss Rap, or Jackie Rap, and uh, it's it's heartwarming. But I'm from Maine. I lived in Maine for a while, and uh, but most of my life has been in Massachusetts. And um, I went to school in Boston at Emanuel College, and then Salem State for my master's. And I've been in education for. I don't mean to say this, but 50 years, oh, that's a killer. <laughs> but I live in Boxford uh, and I have two wonderful sons who are both married, one on the West Coast, one on the East Coast. And the one near me has two sons and they are spitfires. They are, they keep me busy. But I retired from uh, the Beverly schools about 15 years ago. And um, I'm not really retired. I, I am house manager at North Shore Music Theater. I'm a professor at Endicott College. I'm an usher manager at the Cabot Theater. 
And I'm a principal coach for a consulting company and I go into schools to help the principals. And uh, then I have Rotary. <laughs> um, it started out with just being a member and then I was asked to be a secretary and that was 10 years ago, 10 years ago. And I was sponsored to Rotary by Don Kelly. And uh, he didn't quite tell me exactly what was going to be happening, but he said I would be a good choice for Rotary because I have so much to give. And I hope I've proved that right because I it. love it. Rotary is a wonderful, wonderful um, club. It's a family. And um, being on committees various through the years, it's wonderful. I'm also the literacy chairperson, having my education background. So we've done a lot in literacy over the years. And um, it's just been a wonderful experience. Um, I don't know what else you want me to tell you about me, but I should be living in Beverly. I live in Boxford, but I should be living in Beverly because 90% of my time is in Beverly. <laughs> well, we'd love to have you here in Beverly, but, uh, but I just want to say uh, before we introduce Lori that uh, Dawn nailed it. You have <laughs> brought so much to this club Thanks. And I don't, I don't know that we could do half the things we do without you at the helm. So thank, thank you. you for that. You're making me blush. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Jackie, you are truly the 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 uh, the engine that runs Rotary. So thank you for all you do. I know you Thanks. you're involved in so many different things. So thank you for being with us here today. And uh, we'll talk uh, particularly about some of the things that are going on this year. Hey, let's switch over to Laurie Chanchuli. Uh, Laurie, can you tell us? Take about five minutes and kind of walk us through your story. Of course. Thank you. Nice to see everyone. Um, I have been living in Beverly for 30 years. I'm originally uh, a New Yorker as well, born in Brooklyn, and I grew up out in Long Island. Um, I came to Massachusetts to attend college at Smith College out in Northampton, and then I went to law school in Boston um, and met my husband, who was a lifetime Beverly resident, and I don't know, he's third generation, I think, um, Beverlyite. Um, and the rest, as they say, is history. So I've lived here for 30 years this year. We have three sons, one who's at Endicott College, two just graduated from St. John's and will be attending UMass Amherst uh, in September. I am a trial attorney. I've had my office on Cabot Street since 1995. I worked in Boston for about 10 years before that, but I've been on Cabot Street since then. And um, as I said, I'm a civil trial attorney and a mediator. Um, so that's that's what I do. I've been in Rotary since 2013. I came in at a little bit newer than the other people. Um, I waited till my kids were a little bit older so that I had a little bit more of a time commitment. The thing I'm most active with, I would say, I'm on a number of committees. The most ironic of which I would say is the garden committee, because as anyone knows me, I have a black thumb, but okay. I am on that. <laughs> um, my most active committee is um, the scholarship committee. I have um, been on that for, I think, six or seven years. I've been the chair for the past four years. And that's amazing for anyone who doesn't know. Um, Beverly Rotary gives out substantial scholarships to any graduating high school senior who um, lives in Beverly, regardless of where they are at, uh, attending high school. And it's just so fantastic to get to meet these kids and hear their stories and see what they're doing and what they're going to do. Um, it really gives you a lot of faith in the generation that is coming up. There's some amazing kids out, out there. Um, and Rotary also has now a um, Interact Club, which is a club for high school students at Beverly High School. That this is, the, this is coming up on the third school year that there's that so that they can work with us as well. And we can be bringing in the next generation of Rotarians. Awesome. So, well done. Well done. Now, Lori, who sponsored you back in the day? <clears throat> um, uh, I, I actually kind of had joy, joint sponsors. It was, um, thank you for asking me that. It was the president, <laughs> um, Joe. Uh, Joe, Joe, Broad, Joe Broderick? No, no. 
Um, oh, Joe Babriski. Joe Babrisky. It was Joe Babrisky, okay. and it was also yeah. It was technically Joe Babrisky, yes, who sponsored me. I, the the sort of real story of Rotary is a very good friend of mine from Winchester, who was very involved in Rotary. There used to bring me to meetings there and say, "You have to join your town's Rotary. You have to join." And at the time, my kids were really small, so that's really who put me onto Rotary was a friend of mine who was president of a Winchester club. Oddly that's enough, awesome. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I just want to compliment you, Laurie, on the wonderful work you're doing on that scholarship committee. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we had the kids uh, join us at our luncheon, and each one of them spoke uh, about where they're going and what their dreams are, what their goals are. It, was, it just was a really an uplifting meeting, and you're so right. I mean, looking at that next generation, they are impressive. Every single year, they're an impressive group of young people, and um, and we're lucky to have you at the helm of, of, of uh, heading that whole thing up. I also want to add that I had the pleasure of meeting Lori's family over the years. And um, uh, I'll tell you what, you just don't find a better family than the Chinchulis. They are really, uh, really a good family, good, good people and great kids, uh, very respectful. And, and uh, oh, we wish you. you well. We wish you well with all the college tuition. So good luck with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. So at this time, we're going to take a quick break. And uh, for those of you viewing, please watch this uh, very short video all about the doings of the Beverly Rotary Club. We raise a lot of money for Beverly organizations. And they bought us our refrigerated van. They made a significant contribution to the restoration of Ellis Square. They helped us house a family experiencing homelessness. They bought us our bookmobile. They were actually the first ones to donate instruments to the high school band. They bought oxygen masks for our rescue dogs. They help buy our school bus. They fund the annual Brad Gage ice cream social at Lynch Park every summer, and they even scoop the ice cream. Since 2014, they've supported the Cabot, funding preservation of this historic gem. They helped to fund the Council on Aging Van. They were a major donor to our new infant toddler playground. They bought an emergency generator for Harbor Lighthouse. We funded and built the gazebo. And we've got a green thumb. A lot of green thumbs. A lot of green thumbs. Not to mention sculptures. We planted more than 100 trees last year. They donated a shuttle bus stop that brings veterans to the VA hospital in Bedford. We're going to buy a water drone to clean plastics out of Beverly Harbor. They make a big difference for United Way. We give up to eight scholarships. Eight scholarships every year since the mid-1980s. And I was a recipient, and thanks to their help, I was the first in my family to go to college. It's more than just a local organization. There are 33,000 clubs in 200 countries with 1.2 million members worldwide. All that good adds up. Those do-gooders just keep doing good. We funded 13 wells in Kisumu, Kenya, bringing water to 13 schools. We contributed to Kalusha School in Pakistan, and later to the construction of a fabulous women's college. Hi, I'm Izzy Pulido. I'm Mirabella Pulido. I'm Drew Pulido. And we're all youth exchange students. We started the youth exchange program 13 years ago, partly because I was also an exchange student in 1979. I'm Aku. I'm from Finland. They hosted me as an exchange student. We funded Dr. Gordon Sato of Hamilton, who devised a way to grow trees in salt water in Senegal, Mauritania, and Eritrea. Our club has funded at least 20 life-changing surgeries around the world. And we've participated as non-medical volunteers in the Philippines, in Bolivia, and Venezuela. And remember, since launching the Polio Plus campaign over 30 years ago, the number of polio cases worldwide has dropped 99%. In 2019, clubs in the district joined the polar plunge to eradicate polio. The clubs raised $90,000. Can we get back to Beverly, please? Over the past 10 years, we've raised, oh, I don't know, probably about $100,000. Try $400,000. Over the past 10 years, we've raised over $1 million. I have made some wonderful friends. It's downright inspiring. It's an important part of my week. It's a very important part of my week. Sometimes it's the best part of my week. It's one of the best things I do. Even if people still ask about the secret handshake. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, once again, uh, 
I'm here with co-host Mike Harrington, Jackie Rapisati, Matt Piacker, and Laurie Chanchuli to talk about specifically um, the 100th birthday of the Beverly Rotary Club and the activities that we're involved with to celebrate uh, to celebrate our birthday. Jackie, I'm going to start with you. Can you just kind of give us a kind of an overview as to what some of those activities are and where we're at and what we're doing? Sure. Um, well, we started planning last year because we knew this was going to be a spectacular year. And I really think that the 100th centennial activities are one of our biggest undertakings because they are lasting throughout the whole year. So we have many, many activities. And uh, Sue Gabriel and Brian Murphy are the co-chairs and there are probably about eight to 10 people on the committee with them. Uh, we started just by brainstorming ideas and we knew what our goals were. We wanted to mark this milestone and then- Jackie, I think, excuse me, Jackie, I think you're covering your microphone with something. All of a sudden we kind of couldn't hear you as well. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I think there might be so some my paperwork. Hand, my hand was there. Maybe that's okay. Right. Okay. Sorry. Can he cut that out? <laughs> no, no, no. Go ahead. That's okay. Go ahead. Where do you want me to go from here? Just, just can, please continue. Just you know, you, you were saying that uh, it's the it's the busiest year we've had, and right. Uh, and, with uh, all we the activities. Started by brainstorming ideas and looking at the year ahead, and we had some particular goals that we really wanted. Uh, we wanted to build an awareness of who Rotary is in the community. I thought that was very important. Uh, we wanted to friend raise instead of fundraise. We wanted to look for new candidates to be members of the Rotary Club. And we wanted to promote service in our club. In fact, uh, we have asked each member of the club to do 100 um, hours of service as a project for us. We've... we've uh, try to incorporate our saying of service above self. And this year, um, the motto is to change lives, serve, serve to change lives. And I think that's so important because I think we've seen that happening of all the things we did. And we kicked off the celebration on February, well, it was February 25th, but February 24th was our actual birthday. Uh, with a wonderful celebration and with our oldest member, John Glovsky, doing the champagne toast. And it was all virtual at that point. So we did our best and we had a committee and I think Laurie was on that committee uh, delivering cupcakes, special 100th celebration cupcakes to every member in the club that within reason, we couldn't deliver to Arizona to Barry Sullivan, but that's <laughs> all right. But uh, that's how we started it off. And we've tried to do an activity uh, every month uh, we are creating a time capsule so that at the end of this year, we're going to bury it for them to open in a hundred years. And we have all kinds of things going into it, which is great. And it's just indicative of who we are, who we are. We Jackie, can you, can you mention, I'm sorry, Jackie, can you, can you mention some of the specific activities that we are actually involved with? Absolutely. We, uh, I, we did the Sprocket 100, which was a race to, um, raise money for the gazebo. We sponsored a Cabot show uh, recently. We're going to participate in homecoming. And the gazebo is what we're raising funds for. And we're trying to refurbish it and really bring it into the community because the community uses the gazebo and the common and they use it all the time. The recent one that we just participated, which was a month long was the uh, Beverly's treasure hunt, a scavenger hunt. And we had 25 teams participating and most of them were non-Rotarians, which was so exciting. People who just wanted to have fun and it lasted throughout the month and people learned about both Beverly Rotary with the, with the task. They learned about the city and they showed the camaraderie of the teams. It was a wonderful, wonderful, successful event. We've had a banner over Cabot. I mean, we're trying to you know, we're going to participate in Beverly Arts Fest again. We're participating in Homecoming. We're, we're going to have decorated pumpkins all on the gaze gazebo common for our children to decorate. We're just doing lots of wonderful activities. And hopefully we will culminate it with a beautiful commemorative centennial book, which Matt will talk about, and all kinds of things. We're just trying to make people aware. And I think Rotary members have become more of a family by participating in these things. 
Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank more, you, Jack. At the moment, that's what I can think of. Perfect. Thank you for that. Much appreciated. Well done. Yeah, well, Jack, you've been a busy lady and a lot of creative thinking there, a lot of really cool stuff. And, you know, coming out of COVID, I think so many people are just kind of anxious to get out and start doing stuff. So um, a lot of pent up um, energy and, and creativity. So a lot of great stuff. Hey, why don't we pivot over to Lori? Lori, um, uh, Jackie talked about service projects and the, and the committee really challenging Rotarians. So I'll dedicate maybe 100 hours each and, and service projects. So I know the committee's been hard at work kind of coming up with creative ideas for service projects. Can you touch on some of the projects that have been created and maybe accomplished at this point? Laurie, you're muted. Laurie, you're, you're muted. muted if you can unmute. I'm, I'm sorry. Hi. Yes, thanks, Mike. Um, as Jackie said, and as you touched on as well, um, Rotary's motto is service ab above self. And one of the things during COVID was there were no service opportunities um, because of concerns of restrictions. So a lot of the things Rotary typically did, such as serving meals and things like that, were on very, um, they were very much restricting people who were coming into contact. Even Bootstraps was restricting people who were coming in and working in their food pantry. So there's a ton of pent up um, desire, because not only amongst Rotarians, but I think everyone has learned during COVID that human connection is the most important thing. So people are very eager to get back out there, Rotarians and otherwise. Um, so we are creating projects. I personally, at the beginning of this, committed to do 100 acts of service. Um, a little bit different than 100 hours. Some might be longer, some might be shorter. And it keeps me on my toes of trying to find things big and small, whether they're rotary or not. And I would say I'd like to encourage everyone to do that. There's amazing little things you can do on your own. Um, so some of the things Jackie touched on the gazebo, which is in the common, that that's going to be a big project that rotary, that's going to be our crowning um, service project and gift to the community this year in conjunction with the city. Um, so that's a big project to get that refurbished. Um, we, another thing we have coming up that is still in the works as many of you, as hard as it is to believe, but this year is the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And as you know, um, as you may know, Beverly had some rescue operations come from this area and we're, um, we're still finalizing plans to do some kind of a service project and in conjunction with the um, rescue people from Beverly. So we're gonna do a 9-11 project. That is also a national day of service. So anyone watching this, you know, I would encourage you to consider what things you can do that day. Um, we did uh, surrounding Earth Day, a cleanup of all the beaches and parks. Um, we'll probably do another one this summer. Again, if you're looking for your individual projects, there's projects that are free they cost you no money and really very little time. Go down, take your kids down to the beach and do a little bit of a cleanup. Um, or since we have no trash cans, you can probably do it downtown too. Um, we're doing a lot of pop-up projects. Like we talked about, blood drives will come up, meals will come up again. Um, Arts Fest will be coming up in, the, in August. Um, Beverly will do something for the kids there with being able to paint their own t-shirts. Um, we did do um, two projects at the, what was formerly called the Beverly School for the Deaf. It's now the Children's Center for Communication in Beverly. We did a car wash to help raise funds. And we also did something where we went and sanitized a bunch of areas for them. Again, it's a quick and easy project. It gets people together. Um, so we do have a good combination of longer commitment projects such as the gazebo and what, what we've taken to calling pop-up projects where it's an afternoon. Um, this year, in, in um, keeping with technology, we have a, Rotary has a new app that you can go in. It, it tells you when there's a service opportunity. You can go in, log in, keeps track of your hours, but it also lets them easily know how many people are going to do that. We're going to be doing also a project with is an organization called um, Sail Beyond Cancer, and um, they use sailing again, um, in conjunction with people who are treating or recovering for cancer, we're gonna be doing a project with them. There is really no limit um, to the projects that we do as Rotarians, wherever we can find things, we'd like to partner with different organizations in Beverly. Um, as I said, in the fall, the plan is, uh, we weren't able to do much because the schools were, um, they just had such a difficult year with hybrid. 
Um, we weren't able to do much with the Beverly High Interact Club this year, but this fall we're planning to do that and do some joint projects. Um, we will plan on doing um, things around the holidays. Uh, next, during again our centennial, this past Valentine's Day, and we'll do it again this year, we um, got together and um, decorated Valentine's cards and brought them to uh, local long-term rehabs. So I'm sure we're going to do that again. Again, so it's a great combination of things. If anyone out there is, you know, in an organization or a business in Beverly, feel free to contact us. We would be happy to partner with you on a project. Any of you who are individuals, a million things you can do. Just, just a million, you know, gather school supplies from people on your block and donate them to bootstraps or donate them directly to one of the elementary schools in Beverly. They'll make sure they get them to the kids. You know, um, we have these free public libraries. Just go around and collect books from your neighbors and fill the, fill the, you know, little free libraries around town. So there's a million things we can do to all make everybody's life better. And I think especially after the past 18 months that we've had, this is what everybody's looking for. And I promise you will get more out of it than you give. So thank you. And I just add one little project, guys. Is that all right? Sure. Yeah. We sure. did make goodie bags for the veterans in the two homes that we have in Beverly, which totals about 45 veterans. And when we brought them, I have to tell you the looks on their faces, they were filled with games, uh, practical needs, shaving cream, things like that, uh, hand cream for the ladies. And I have to tell you, it made your heart feel good that we could do something for them because they served. And we did that around Memorial Day. Thank you. That's great, Jackie. And, and the hope is, again, one of the things the Centennial Committee has been doing is trying to look month by month. And the hope, again, we have 9-11 in September. The hope is around Veterans Day, we'll do something else for the veterans. But we really are trying to have at least um, what I call a pop-up project a month, the smaller one-off projects. And then the gazebo is the big project that will take a lot of time and resources. So we are actively trying to month by month have projects for people to participate in. And you get different people all the time. You get some of the same people, but that's the beauty of Rotary. Some people have different interests, different skills, um, different time availability. And so eventually you get to work with everyone in this club, which is awesome. Sure is. Thank you so much, Laurie. That was uh... That was very, very helpful. And to all of you that are watching this program, uh, for those that do want to help us and get involved with some of our projects and be a little bit more community oriented, uh, we will be letting you know before the program ends how to do that, how to reach out to us and get that information. But again, thank you so much, Laurie, for all that you do for our club. Um, and now, Matt, I'm going to turn to you. I know that we have a uh, a commemorative book that we're putting together to celebrate our 100th birthday. And maybe you can share some thoughts on that. Sure. I'd be happy. To. Thank you, Alan. Um, so first, a little bit of a sort of a background to put it in context. Um, the idea of the book kind of came along because honestly, what we would be doing if there wasn't a pandemic, uh, which we're hopefully beginning to emerge from, as long as I've been in the club and for years before that, the club had a big annual event. It was, it was the biggest event of the club for the year. It was a big fundraiser. It was a big fundraiser. Um, it was typically someplace like the ballroom at the, uh, the grand ballroom at the Danvers port. It would be a sit down dinner. There would be entertainment. There would be auctions and raffles and all kinds of goings on and, and a good time. And it was attended by hundreds of people every year. People, you know, our club has maybe about a hundred people on average uh, on, in the roster book, but we would have, we had a couple of years, I know we had way past 300 people plus in that, in that event. Um, and it was a lot of fun. And part of what would accompany that event is that we would put together a program book and the program book would be something about what the program was gonna be during the night, of course, but it was also full of well-wisher ads and sponsor ads. And um, you know, most of the content was advertising and that was part of the fundraiser. The book would raise, you know, a number of thousands of dollars every year towards uh, our rotary fundraising goals. So that was great. So what do we do when there's a pandemic and we can't hold the gala? We actually had one scheduled last March that was canceled three days before it was going to be held. Um, and this year we were not comfortable scheduling any such thing because we just didn't know what the terrain was going to look like. And it takes, it literally takes months and months of planning to put one of these things together. So we couldn't get one on the calendar for 2021. Um, and here we are in our hundredth anniversary year and we can't do a bigger version of what we normally do. We couldn't do any version of it. And the thought occurred to our committee, 
the program book could be the show. Instead of us having a gala event highlighted by some kind of entertainment show, the book is the show. The book concept is that it's going to be filled with memorabilia, pictures, images, stories, um, uh, long and short, hopefully, people that are uh, in the club, people that uh, are in the community are being asked to uh, submit something and we'll edit it down and we'll put it in the book. And instead of it being a program book, which I always liked them, I, I kept them as keepsakes, but I think most people probably forgot where they put them or threw them away. We're hoping this will be almost akin to like a coffee table book, something that will be a collector's item. Uh, it'll be the history of the Beverly Rotary Club in different ways. It'll be in a way a history of the community of Beverly. It's not just about the Beverly Rotary Club and the Beverly Rotary Club has a hundred years of history to share. And we're gonna to try to get as many way, images and stories about that into the book as we possibly can. Um, so what I wanted to add to that is um, it's gonna be interesting content. I think everyone's gonna to wanna to have one. Uh, images, stories, memorabilia, personal stories, historical stories, uh, filled with pictures and events and doings in a way that really tell the story of the entire Beverly community over the last 100 years. And we hope to, no, normally the program book would have gotten distributed one copy to maybe every person or couple that attended one of our gala events. So several hundred would be out there. I think the year we had an event at the Cabot, we gave away 700 program books. I don't know where they are now. I'm, I'm hoping that we can raise that scale a lot. What, instead of giving them away to people that attend an event, we'd like to just find a way to give them away to as many people in the community as possible. And uh, I, before, the, uh, before we started recording this, Alan, you asked me, uh, you know, why would somebody who's not part of Beverly Rotary want one? Would want, I, I think the way you phrased it was, why would someone want to buy one? Well, for one thing, the price is right. They are free. Now, it's also a fundraiser, and we are going out into the community, just like we did with the old fashioned program book. And we're looking for sponsorships and ads and well-wishers and all that. And there will be content in the book highlighting, you know, individuals and businesses that want their name in the book, full page, whatever. Um, and, and that's what's gonna pay for the book and also be part of the fundraising function of what we're doing here. But the book is gonna be much more than a fundraiser. It's gonna be something that I think people are gonna wanna pick up and look at and find something they didn't see before, put it down, put it away, bring it out again, look at that and say, oh, wow, look at this. Oh, I just met somebody. And look, there's a story that they, here, here's their picture or here's their father's picture who was a president in the Beverly Rotary Club in 1945 or what have you. So that's the kind of content that we're hoping to have. We're hoping to spark some excitement about it. And there should be some surprises in it as well. So I hope that we can get as many people as possible to participate. And I would love if we got not just hundreds, but even thousands of copies of it out there to the community. Absolutely. I, I, and I think it's, it's, it's most interesting. I mean, as you look at the history of our club, the first, I don't know the exact number of years, but 30 years or 40 years, whatever it was, uh, there were no women allowed in, the, in, the, in Rotary, not necessarily Beverly, but in Rotary. And, um, you know, the, the, so the good news is that all changed. And not only has it changed here in Beverly, we've had several uh, women presidents, and we have a woman president coming up, uh, not actually starting tomorrow. Um, so that's, a, that's kind of a big deal. So when you look at what's going to be in that book, it's, it's just very interesting information, right, from a historical perspective. A absolutely. And on that subject, I, I, I was bemused, I'll say, to learn uh, when I was comparing the first year that Beverly Rotary, or Rotary in general, it wasn't just our club, um, first admitted its woman, first women members was sometime after the Kentucky Derby first allowed women jockeys. <laughs> so we were a little yeah. behind on that one, but I think we're trying to be a lot more progressive now. It actually wasn't until the late eighties. So our club existed almost 70 years before women were allowed to be Rotarians. 70 years. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It was uh, 1988 or nine. Yeah. Yeah, well, things have really evolved. Just in general, folks, as you've rolled up your sleeves this year and get so involved in all these projects and activities, celebrating the 100th year, uh, just any other surprises or takeaways, you know, as you've dug more into Rotary and the community and, and some of the, you know, the people we support and that type of thing? Anybody have any comments? I have myself have just gotten to know people so much more and the community itself. I've gotten to meet people that are in businesses in Beverly that I didn't even know existed. 
And it was just so refreshing to see new people and get some young people in our Rotary Club involved in things. That was important. Yeah, well, it's been a great year for outreach. Absolutely. And the fact that we're back together face to face for the past three or four weeks has been incredible. It's just been, it's been just great and we'll continue to get better. Um, Jackie, this question might be more for you. Um, for anybody that's watching the show that, that you know, wants to learn more about our activities and or participate in our activities, and for anybody who might want to place an ad in the commemorative book that Matt just discussed, well, what's the easiest way for them to, to contact us? Well, the easiest way is to go to our website, which is uh, www.beverlyrotaryclub.com. And right on there are links to make a donation to the Centennial Celebration or to purchase an ad. And I know that perhaps the, the links might be here as well. So there are a number of ways, but they can just contact anybody in the Beverly Rotary Club and we can point them in the right direction. Perfect, thank you. Thank you for that. Well, hey, great show. Thank you all three of you for being here today. Uh, really busy year at the Rotary Club. So much, so much going on with the 100th year anniversary. Obviously, if anybody decides they'd like to support our book, uh, the, the money that's raised through all the different ads supports all these different projects you've heard about around town, particularly the gazebo. The gazebo, if some people don't know, was actually built by the Rotary Club back in the 90s. And it's been a great fixture there in Beverly Common, but you know, it's, in, it's in need of some updates and repairs. And that's going to cost some money. So a, a good size portion of the proceeds from the book We'll, we'll go to that project. So we really appreciate people's uh, support and involvement. But in any case, I'd like to thank Matt Piarca and Laurie Chanchuli and Jackie Rapasati for being here today. I hope you folks all enjoy the rest of your summer and congratulations on all your projects. And everybody at home, thank you for joining us here today on Around Town with Rotary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, Alan.